Hello, um, I'm Maria Constantino. I'm Roland Block. And we would like to welcome you on a presentation called Media Facades, which, ha which involves interactive brand communication in the urban space. Um, first of all, uh, when we start talking about Media Facades and their brand interaction, the brand communication in the urban space, we decided to define ourselves, just as a small introduction of our identity. Um, I describe myself in terms of pros and cons uh, regarding the communication, kind of subtle, but in the same time forthright. I'm uh, quite often impatient, um, ignoring ignorance. Um, at the same time, I dislike decadence uh, very much, but I like purism. And in my case, my attributes of branding of my identity is uh, I describe myself as quite sociable, quite talkative, and impatient as my colleague here. I love shopping, but I hate an empty wallet, and I love to observe the human behavior. And talking about uh, this, we will proceed into our um, index, which uh, first we have a small introduction to uh, media facades, and then we go to our lexicon where we define the urban space identity branding, corporate architecture, media architecture, and media facade. And then we will proceed to our case studies, our status quo, our matrix tool that we developed, and our point of view. So um, when we come, we, we start from the urban space. So when we get to the urban space, um, everyone knows uh, the word change. Uh, everyone has been talking about this word. and. Uh, no, not many people know that the word change can be positive as well as negative. It can mean metamorphosis, transformation, reinvention, alteration, mutation, and modification. So it's not only the public space, the urban space that uh, has changed, but also how um, urban designers, architects, and in general designers uh, perceive it and, um, and design make concepts for it. Uh, it depends on the functions of uh, the space and the needs of the users, which is us. And everyone knows Carpe Diem, which means seize the day. But uh, now that um, this trend, uh, uh, the new trend is Carpe Noctum, which means seize the night, uh, which uh, it is a quite of a kind of um, circadian light communication. The urban space nowadays. Um, embodies this uh, light communication around the clock. It is not only since the day, but also since the night. And uh, the mediatization of uh, the space, uh, it's not only on during the nighttime, but also the daytime, resetting the clock every 12 hours. Talking about this uh, change of the urban space, uh, we we decided to ask ourselves um, how this change has influenced the identity. And according to the corporate entity uh, um, rules, um, we set ourselves some questions such as, who am I? Who do I want to be? And my perception versus uh, others perceiving me, which is uh, the self-image, self-perception versus public image and perception. And how, how can I merge this self-image to the social identity? Well, branding is a tool used for merging the identity into the public. And uh, in, in this case of the public space, urban space or media facades application, the brand owner tries to, to create a visual bridge between the gap of the brand image and brand identity. And uh, with this brand identity, uh, he achieves, uh, he tries to achieve a consumer recognition, a kind of differentiation from the other products, what makes it particular. And a tool for this in the application in the urban space, a kind of branding, it's, it's corporate architecture, which is brand architecture. It is used for the embossment of concern input, embossment of associations, market index and capacity, and embossment of architects. So this answers the question, how can a company transfer its corporate identity into its architecture? 
um, where we see that uh, architecture can form a component of corporate identity of branding system. And one tool of this corporate architecture is uh, one, one component is uh, media architecture, which my colleague would explain. As Maria mentioned, um, the media architecture can become a part of the corporate architecture of a brand or a company, and it fulfills uh, the function of communication to the people. So uh, the corporate identity, identity can be communicated through the media architecture to the people. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, different attributes to describe uh, media architecture. For example, the integration of the media architecture into the building. Um, so what does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, was the media technology integrated um, or incorporated into the architecture uh, after the, um, finishing the building or um, was it uh, in, in integrated into the process of planning of the building? Another aspect is the uh, the content of the media facade, which is very important. Um, is it um, related to the building and the architecture or uh, in the urban context, or does it noth have nothing in common with it? And uh, another quite important aspect is uh, the interaction, what we uh, later will describe more in detail. Um, so the interaction with the urban context and the urban environment and last but not least with the people. So um, first, uh, when we talk about uh, media facade technology, we want to give you an overview um, of the history of uh, using um, facade design in general. So um, the history of designing walls goes back to the Baroque uh, and the Renaissance. As you can see on the top picture on the left, the, um, the paintings from Michelangelo. Um, and um, in the modern times, um, big wall um, media paintings or paintings in general um, uh, became real and they were used for um, propaganda purposes, um, uh, for um, communicating political messages uh, to a wide audience uh, in the public space. Um, the next uh, picture shows uh, the um, development of uh, billboards, so uh, marketing strategies evolved and um, um, in order to communicate the brand at the beginning of the 20th century. Um, in contrast to this, uh, controvers controversial political messages um, have been uh, communicated, uh, for example, through the graffiti, communi uh, graffiti community. Um, which um, which try to regain the urban space back to the people. Um, and uh, the next picture shows the, the development of motion pictures, um, uh, like in the Times Square with um, big urban screens, which communicate a lot of different brands to the, um, to the people. And uh, this shows uh, the end so far of the de development of uh, media facade technology and uh, a quite new um, technology or development is the, uh, is the third uh, dimensional uh, display no NOVA in Zurich which um, adds the third dimension to the um, facade or the building structure. Uh, at the bottom um, is a um, description of media facade uh, technology into different typologies. So first of all, we have projection facades, either from the front or from the rear. Um, then there are passive media facades, which can be described by um, or de created by um, etched windows, which um, changes their appearance um, ac um, according to the point of view and the weather conditions. And then there are mechanical facades, which are driven by engines. Um, the next are window grid animations, uh, which represent a kind of a pixel grid, uh, so each window represents one pixel. Mm, and the last one are display facades uh, on which our main focus